Okay, guys, so I'm going to go through these questions unmuted this time. Um, so you can watch the videos to see how you actually do the problems, but I'm going to explain all the true and false and everything like that. Okay, so for number one, it says, matters to find us anything that is visible to the human eye. Well, since fire, for example, is um, visible to the human eye, but it does not have a mass and does not actually take up space, that statement is false. So I corrected it saying it has mass and takes up space. Um, for number two, a blank is a substance that cannot be broken down into simpler substances. The example I would use is NaCl. NaCl is a compound. It can be broken down into Na and Cl. So that's false. And I would cross that out and put element because elements cannot be broken down. Um, we'll get to that in the next chapter. They actually can be, but for right now, let's say they can't. Um, three, pure water is a mixture. That's false. H2O is a compound or a pure substance. Whatever you want to write is fine. Four is false. Chemical properties of a substance are those that can be observed without changing the composition. That is a physical property. Five, flammability of gasoline is a chemical property. That's true. When you dissolve solid sugar into water, this new solution will taste sweet. The sugar went through, well, since, as I said, anytime you dissolve anything, that's a physical change. That's false. It's physical change. You're not changing the identity of the sugar. You're just dissolving it. Um, number seven, an energy diagram that shows the products having higher energy than the reactants it illustrates endothermic reaction. That's true. You're absorbing energy. That's great. And I showed a diagram in my silent film. Hope you enjoy. Eight, the large heat capacity of water prevents large fluctuations, right? So the large heat capacity of water is why um, water doesn't change temperature significantly, while metal, which has a low heat capacity, changes temperature very rapidly. Um, for number nine, a pure substance is B, composed of only one type of atom or molecule. If it were composed of two or more, um, either atoms or molecules or regions, that would be a mixture. For number 10, I did this setup. I showed it in my silent film. You take methane, you add oxygen, and what you get is CO2 and H2O. Since you have 11 grams of CO2 and 9 grams of water, that's 20 grams on your product side. Based on the law of conservation of mass, you need 20 on both sides. So since you already have 16 here, you need 4 grams of methane. And that's it. Okay, so I'd love to see that reaction just in case you guys forget how to do it. Just write the reaction first. Which type of energy is associated with motion? That's kinetic energy. Remember, potential energy has to do with a, an object's position. Okay. Number 12 is really nice because of what it has you do is use your Q equals MC delta T. Um, you know your Q, it's 100 joules. You know your M, which is the mass, 26.2. You know your delta T, you're trying to solve for C. Your C or your specific heat capacity can be used to identify the identity of an element. So specifically in this problem, what I'm going to do is divide, I need to isolate C, so I'm going to divide by 26.2 on both sides, and then divide by 8.5, um, and what you end up getting is 0.449. So that is how I can identify that my metal in this problem is iron. If I were to get that my metal had a specific heat of 0.128, it would be gold. So it's really nice because it lets scientists determine if they don't know what metal they're dealing with, it lets them determine what metal it is. All right, identify the following as a physical or chemical property. Red color, physical. I can identify it without changing its identity. Volume, same thing. Ability to dissolve in water. I'm not changing the identity of the compound, so it's going to be physical. Um, flammability, chemical. Um, I'm changing the identity. Freezing point, anytime I'm changing the um, state of matter, it's going to be physical. I'm not actually changing the identity, just what state it's in. Conductivity, if you think about a wire um, with electrons moving through it, that's the conductivity, the ability to have electrons move through it. You're not actually changing the identity of the wire. You're just having electrons move through it. Um, reacts with air. Anytime you see reaction, chemical automatically. Um, a, NaCl dissolves. As soon as you see it dissolves, automatically physical. You're not changing the identity of NaCl. You're just dissolving it into water. Cutting an apple is physical. Heat changes H2O to steam. It's still going to be water. It's just a different state of matter. Therefore, it's physical. I break up concrete, that's physical again. Anytime I burn anything, even if it's food that's going to be chemical, I can't get that back. Food color, I know it's changing the color, guys, but I'm just dissolving it in water. Therefore, it doesn't change the identity. It's physical. Chewing food into smaller pieces, not changing the identity. It's physical. And enzymes, if they're breaking down compounds, changing those compounds, it's going to be chemical. All right. 
Almost done. Distilled water, that is H2O, that's a pure substance. And pure substance, remember, you can either say it's a compound or an element, that's definitely a compound. You got two or more different elements in there. Birthday cake is definitely a mixture. If you take from the top, you'll get frosting. If you take from the bottom, you'll get cake. So it's heterogeneous. Coffee, I'm thinking about the liquid coffee. That is a mixture and it's homogeneous. If you're drinking heterogeneous coffee, you should get new coffee. Um, gold is a pure substance. You can find it on the periodic table. Therefore, it is an element. Chicken noodle soup is a mixture. You'll get um, vegetables one time, noodles another time, chicken another time. Therefore, it's heterogeneous. Salt is a pure substance. It's a compound. It's got two different elements. All right. So um, I'm going to go through really briefly these problems. Guys, I go through it really well, silently, but really well in the video. For here, you're converting. Notice I do my four steps for most of these. The main things that you need to think about for here, um, just look through my steps. Look through how I do it on the other video. But for here, this would be eight. That's one sig fig. This has two sig figs, and therefore my final answer should just have one sig fig. Okay, so nothing crazy different about that problem. Here I'm just adding 273 plus degrees Celsius. Since I'm adding, though, I just look at decimal places. This has no decimal places. This has no decimal places. That should have none as well. Scrolling down, this is going to be a two-step problem. I go from Kelvin to Celsius, then to Fahrenheit. Okay, so the first step I get 27 degrees Celsius and then I convert one more time. Remember, since my final step is going to be to add 32 degrees, I need no decimal places since I'm adding. So that's why it's 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. 19, guys, I didn't show my four steps. I need you to. I'm sorry, I was in a rush. 15.4 um, joules. I put joules on bottom, little calories up top. Um, one little calorie equals 4.184 joules. Here I'm going from big calories to joules, so big calories on bottom, little calories up top. Um, because I can't go directly from big calories to joules, I need to go first go to little calories. So I go to little calories, then I go to joules, and I put in all of those um, numbers. Remember, these are exact, so I'm not going to look at sig figs there. Exact, no sig figs, therefore just two sig figs here, so my final answer needs two sig figs. Here. Very similar, I'm just going to kilojoules, so I go from cals to joules, because I can't go directly, then to kilojoules. Notice again, I don't use these, because those are exact. They're three sig figs, so my final answer needs three sig figs. <coughs> for A, guys, I'm trying to solve for Q. I go through this in the problem. I'm sorry, I'm, it was quiet. Um, Q equals MC delta T, M is 25. 45 is your... Um, is your change in temperature. So it ended, it's TF minus TI, so 112 minus 67. I'm really sorry, I messed up. It should be 45.0, okay? Times, since I know this is chloroform, I get the C from here, it's 0.96. So once you calculate that, um, you multiply them out, that's two sig figs, that's three, it should be 45.0, and that's two, so my final, final answer should have two sig figs, which now I'm realizing I did incorrectly. So um, this should be 1,100 joules. That should be your final answer. Okay. Um, we just got B and C and then we're done. So for here, that's our Q. So I plug in 4,814. That is my mass. My change in temperature is 85.0 and then my C. So I need to divide both sides by 59 and 85 and I get 0 0.960 because I need three sig figs, four sig figs, and five sig figs. Okay, then you go up because it asks you then to identify the sample and you see that this is chloroform. Here's the last one. Here you know your mass because Q equals MC delta T. There's your mass. You know it's iron, so your C is 0.46. You get it from the table above. And then your change in temperature, you're going from 50 to 34, so TF minus TI, your change in temperature is negative 16, which is totally fine to be negative. Therefore, your Q, though, is going to be negative, which tells you it's exothermic or energy is released. If it were positive, then it would be endothermic, energy is gained. Okay, so again, guys, sorry my other video, which was great and took a long time to make, was silent. Hopefully you can use that to help you with these problems and not just me giving you all the answers. Um, but hopefully this helped you with the rest of the problems.
I don't know how to stop it. How do I stop the recording? Ah! <sighs> hmm. This won't stop recording. This is super frustrating. I just spent all that time. No, I'm not going to do it again. How do you stop? Can you? Can one of you come help me? Pause video.